We all know the ultimate end goal for artificial intelligence. It's not about making video editing easier or writing movie scripts. It's not to pilot spaceships or for world domination. No, we all know it's all about robot waifus at the end of the day. So we're going to be exploring a few examples of robot waifus in cinema spanning a 60-year period from 1927 to 1987, starting with the 1927 sci-fi classic Metropolis. Based on the 1925 novel of the same name, Metropolis features the first robot waifu in cinema, establishing a precedent for all robot waifus to follow, and even robot-adjacent waifus like The Bride of Frankenstein. The story revolves around Fritter, the son of the city's founder who lives a life of luxury among the uppermost class of society. He is then introduced to Maria, a saintly woman from the lower class of workers who live underground. When he decides to take a trip below to search for her, he discovers that the city is run by an exploited lower class of workers. Having lived the sheltered life, he was previously unaware of these workers' predicament. But with the help of Maria, he decides to be a mediator between the upper and lower classes. But a mad scientist seeks to thwart their plans. The scientist has been working on a robot, originally to replace his long-lost love. But now, under the orders of the city's founder, he repurposes the robot to take on the likeness of Maria, and sow discord among the workers. The movie features a pretty lengthy sequence where Maria's likeness is scanned onto the robot. It used some pretty groundbreaking visual effects for the time, and even today, almost 100 years later, it's pretty spectacular to look at. Since this robot is the first of its kind, no one even suspects that this imposter is not even human. Under the orders of the mad scientist, this imposter drives the upper-class men mad with lust causing chaos in her wake. She also whips the lower class workers into a frenzy, causing them to riot and destroy these machines that they've been laboring under. While they're under her spell, they forget about their own children who are endangered by the destruction of the machines that maintain their homes. When they realize they've been tricked, they take to the streets of the upper city and look for this woman. Unfortunately, they come across the innocent real Maria who was busy saving these children the whole time. A chase ensues and through a fortunate mishap, they end up apprehending the imposter and burning her at the stake. The robot doesn't seem to be bothered by this and when she's burned, her mechanical form is revealed. And at the end, all is well. The workers and the upper class uh, reconcile with each other. The hero gets the girl, everybody lives happily ever after. Well, almost everybody. It's a sad fate for the robot waifu. And that evil waifu must have given that entire generation quite a scare because we're gonna jump almost 40 years to our next feature, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine. In this movie, the mad scientist Dr. Goldfoot, played by Vincent Price, makes robot waifus programmed to find rich men and exploit them for their money. Clarity ensues when a bundling James Bond wannabe gets accidentally mixed up in one of these schemes. It's interesting to compare this movie to current times since interaction with these robot waifus reminds you a little bit like interacting with a large language model today. Sometimes their words and actions are a little bit nonsensical and sometimes Dr. Goldfoot has to intervene to get them back on track because they don't always do exactly what they're told. The Mad Doctor uses machines with what we would today call training data in order to give the girls new capabilities like a new language or to learn how to dance. There's nothing serious about this movie, but it does seriously nail the depiction of the robot waifu dream. Dr. Goldfoot has a harem of robot waifus that wait on him hand and foot and do his evil bidding. Given the popularity of robots in the 60s, I'm kind of surprised that there aren't more robot waifu movies like this. But we're going to have to jump another 10 years before we get to our next feature, the quintessential robot waifu movie, 
The Stepford Wives. Now, I'm not talking about the 2004 film, but the 1975 original that was based off of the 1972 novel of the same name. Now, even if you haven't seen the movie or read the books, you might be familiar with the term Stepford Wife, which describes a type of obedient housewife. And even though the novel can probably take credit for popularizing the term, this movie is still worth watching. I haven't found a Blu-ray release for this film. So far as I'm aware, there is only DVD quality out there, which is a bit of a shame, and I feel like it's overdue for a remaster. In the film, a family moves from the big city of New York to the sleepy town of Stepford. And the wife becomes quickly bored because she can't socialize with any of the other housewives. All they do is stay home and cook and clean all day, except for two other women who have also very recently moved to Stepford. After a while, it starts to become apparent that these wives are very peculiar. Every once in a while, one of them glitches out and starts to repeat the same thing over and over again. And, spoiler alert, turns out all of the wives have been replaced with robot copies. There are some signs that the men are planning on replacing the main character as well. One of the husbands is an artist who does extensive sketches of her, and another husband is interested in taking extensive recordings of her voice. This is one of the more interesting details for me, since it depicts somebody collecting voice samples for cloning. And as someone who's just spent all morning collecting voice samples for the voice that you're hearing now, you can imagine I got quite a kick out of that. There's not much else to the story. All the wives are robots and all of the new wives get replaced with robots. The mechanical parts of these robots are never really shown. The only visual indication we have is a scene where one of the robots gets stabbed and does not bleed. But other than that, we're just talking about a low-budget film that involves mostly a bunch of people talking. It's still an interesting psychological thriller and maybe worth watching just to say that you've seen it. Moving into the next decade, we have no shortage of robot waifus to choose from, starting with the 1982 movie Blade Runner. Now, Blade Runner is a movie that needs no introduction. It revolves around replicants, which are synthetic humans. Worth pointing out here that it's debatable whether or not to call them robots because they are more organic than uh, mechanical. But for the purpose of discussion, I'm going to go ahead and count them as very sophisticated robots. Now, this movie isn't about robot waifus per se, but there is the character of Rachel, which counts as a robot waifu to me. She's a new kind of replicant that has had memories implanted into her so that she thinks she's human. And she exists pretty much at the whim of the CEO of Tyrell Corporation. Now, the movie's not really about her. She's kind of a side character, but she still entered the public consciousness as an example of a robot waifu. Now, there are two other female replicants in the movie and Deckard has been sent to terminate them. It's kind of debatable whether or not they count as waifus, but I guess since one of them is the girlfriend of Roy Batty, um, you could count her as waifu material. And that's pretty much all I have to say about Blade Runner, so let's move on a few more years to 1985's Weird Science, starring Kelly LeBrock. Now, this movie has a pretty interesting sequence where they basically feed in a bunch of training data to a supercomputer in order for it to create the perfect robot waifu. While there's a little bit of a magical or supernatural flair to this, they basically have the right idea that you need a lot of computing power and as much training data as you can get your hands on. Things seem to work pretty well and they end up creating the robot waifu of their dreams. Now, instead of being a mindless drone, she actually ends up being the one in charge, since she has superhuman intelligence and uh, supernatural powers, it seems. Instead of just existing for their pleasure, she actually teaches them a thing or two and helps them grow into better people at the end of the movie. 
Another interesting aspect of this movie is that the waifu is not really supposed to be a clone of anybody. She is entirely synthesized from scratch. Other than that, what else is there to really say? It's the teenage nerd's fantasy come to life. And it is the movie that comes to mind for a lot of people when you say robot waifu. So let's move on and go forward two more years to the 1987 movie Cherry 2000. This movie takes place in a post-apocalyptic future where a man who lives in the remnants of society loses his robot waifu, which is an android under the model name Cherry 2000, and he hires somebody to help him brave the wasteland in search for a replacement. The Cherry 2000 is the MacGuffin of this movie. They spend the entire movie getting up to that point, so we really don't see a lot of the actual robot waifu. And at the end of the day, when he finally gets his goal, he realizes that the real woman he's been with is much better than a robot could ever be. Did I just spoil the ending for this movie? I don't know, is it really a spoiler when you can see the ending coming before you even start watching it? The moral of the story is that the real waifus are the ones we made along the way. Kind of an on-the-nose message, but this movie's not really meant to make you think that hard. And that'll do it for today's video. There are a lot more examples of robot waifus moving into the future, but I thought it'd be interesting to cover some of these earlier examples from maybe some lesser-known movies. If you're still here, I thank you for watching this long. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a nice day.